Summary of No Sugar by Jack Davis The family Millamuramundi, consisting of Jimmy, Sam, Millie, Gran, Joe the Sissy, and David, is introduced at the beginning of the play in the year 1930. The story takes place in the city of Northam, on the government well Aboriginal Reserve. Australia is going through the Great Depression, just like the rest of the world. This means that jobs and money are hard to come by. The Millamuramundi family gets by on government food stamps, meat they catch themselves, and the extra money Sam, Jimmy, and Joe make by doing odd jobs around town. There are many problems that the Millamuramundes have to deal with, such as Jimmy's jail for public drinking and Sissy's poor health. The family is having a hard time staying alive, but everyone looks out for each other and is willing to give up things for the good of the group. As the Millamuramundi family struggles to make ends meet, the audience gets a glimpse into the complicated plans of Neville, Miss Dunn, the sergeant, and the constable. These four people are always on the phone, making plans to move the Northam Aboriginal community to the more river native settlement. The move will have the most impact on the Millamuramundi family and their neighbors, but they have no say in the matter. Instead, one day the sergeant and the constable show up at their camp and tell them they have to leave forever. Jimmy and Gran fight back, but they can't win. The family moves in the end. Moore River is run by Mr. Neal and Matron Neal, his wife, who also runs the hospital in the area. Matron Neal really wants the best for Moore River's native people, but Mr. Neal is more interested in his own happiness and taking out his anger, lust, and violence on the Aboriginal Australians he cares for. When the Millamuramundes get to Moore River, Matron Neal checks them out right away. The family was sent to Moore River with dozens of other Aboriginal families because they were thought to have scabies. The matron, however, checks out the group and decides they are fit. Unfortunately, they will still have to stay in Moore River. This is Neville's plan all along, to make room in Northam for white families and white leisure. From Millamura to Moore River, the Monday family starts a new life. Joe meets Mary, another girl who lives at the camp, and falls in love with her. She gets pregnant in the end, and Joe talks her into running away with him back to Northam, where they can live on their own. They get away from Moore River without permission and are free and happy for a few months, but the sergeant and constable catch them in the end. Joe goes to jail, and Mary goes back to Moore River. The Millamuramundes take care of Mary and make her part of their family when they get back to Moore River. Neil beats her up because she turned down his job offer at the hospital, where she thinks he would try to sexually harass or attack her. Millie and Gran take care of her wounds. And when she gives birth, Gran takes care of her and ties the knot in the baby's umbilical cord. Neville comes to Moore River on Australia Day 1934 to give a speech. Jimmy and his extended family don't like the speech because it sounds like it says Aboriginal Australians should be thankful for the white people who colonized their land. Neville sings a song, and Jimmy and some other people make fun of it. Neville stops the event to scold Jimmy. Jimmy tries to fight back, but his heart is weak and can't handle it. He gets too excited and passes out. Joe gets out of jail and meets his new son. He names him Jimmy after his uncle. In the end, Neil lets him leave Moore River after he asks him to. When the play ends, Joe, Mary, and their child leave Moore River a second time. About the author. Jack Davis was born in Perth, Australia, but grew up in the city of Yarloop and on the Moore River native settlement. One of the places that his play No Sugar is set is the Moore River native settlement. Davis's first language was English, but when he was an adult living on a reservation, he started to learn the language of his aboriginal relatives. Davis then became interested in politics, advocacy, and action. He started the Aboriginal Writers, Oral Literature, and Dramatists Association and was head of the Aboriginal Centre in Perth and chairman of the Aboriginal Lands Trust. Davis wrote poetry, memoirs, and plays all his life, but his first book, The Firstborn and Other Poems, didn't come out until 1970. He wrote and published 12 more books, including A Boy's Life, a biography that came out in 1991, and the three plays that make up his first Born series. 
These plays are No Sugar, 1985, The Dreamers, 1982, and Burungeon, Smell the Wind, 1989. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.